There has been a major nuclear war. People are fighting for survival and whole cities are underwater. On the bright side, you can get two free destroyers, so it's not all bad. Paul on the bowl and Kennedy is my darling. Paul on the bowl. Update 085 arrives very shortly and there's a lot in it, so I'll give it a not so quick overview. I've left a few less important things out to keep this as short as possible. This update, I've waited for the patch notes to come out before recording Foghorn so that my summary is more accurate. Uh, the notes are released on Tuesday afternoon before the update and CCs don't get the notes any earlier than you do, so this means Foghorn arrives just as the update is going out, but it covers all of the important bits of 085. Let me know in the comments whether you prefer later and more accurate or earlier with some guesswork and emissions. On with the news. A new temporary fun game mode based on a pokal post there. I can't say post-apocalyptic in less than 10 takes, so I'm going to use the word dystopian instead. <clears throat> Update 085's headline feature is the Rogue Wave event, which is an alternative game mode based on a dystopian world and a related set of directives and missions. There's also a themed port modeled around the game mode to help you get in the mood. The Rogue Wave event includes a set of the now familiar weekly directives. Complete the missions in each of the four directives and you can win yourself USS Hill, the new premium tier 5 destroyer. I've had her to test for the past few weeks and she's a fun little ship, worth having if you like Nicholas or Mahan. The main part of the event is a new temporary game mode which sees four teams of three battle in what is essentially a combination of arms race and torpedo beat. Nine tier 10 destroyers, including the upcoming French DD Kleber, more about that later, have been repurposed for dystopian combat. They fall into three categories with different characteristics. Octopus for stealth torpedo focus, Barracuda for main gun focus, and Moray Eel for agility focus. Ships start with no consumables whatsoever and these have to be collected during the battle. The map edge steadily shrinks as the battle continues, forcing teams into a final brawl in the centre. You can go solo or in divisions of up to three with the division forming an entire team, so it's a great one to play with your friends. I played this a few weeks ago with Chrysantos and Conway on the Wargaming stream and it was a lot of fun. Friendly fire is disabled, so don't be shy with your torpedoes. During Rogue Wave, there's another ship you can win, although it will be a lot harder to get than Hill, USS Benham, the new Tier 9 USN destroyer. I've been testing Benham over the past month and it's a fantastic all-rounder destroyer with excellent torpedo armament and good guns. In order to get it, there is a bit of a grind though. During 085, you can earn a maximum of 850 fuel tokens in game, and Benham costs 800. So you can get her for free, but it will be tough. You can supplement your tokens with premium containers if you want to put some real money into it. As always, I say don't buy containers you can't afford. However, Benham is worth some cash if you like the look of her but can't quite grind her for free. Permanent dystopian camos will be added to the armory for several tier 10 destroyers, and these can also drop from premium event containers. I should be getting some of these containers to give away, so be sure to catch me on Twitch. There's a lot more in 085 besides Rogue Wave. A small change to matchmaking will make it less likely that you'll see two tier 8 carriers per team, with queues of less than one minute being capped at one tier 8 carrier per team. Clan Brawl is a new variation on clan battles designed for the summer months when not as many people are around. Clan Brawls will happen on two specific Saturdays rather than a long season lasting many weeks. The 6th and 20th of July. Clans can choose a cross-server 6-hour slot in which to compete. The 6th of July will be Tier 8 ships and the 20th of July Tier 10 ships. I believe the team size will be 6 and there will be no CVs, but more details will be published next week on the news portal. 085 also has two ranked sprint seasons in it. The first runs from the 27th of June to the 9th of July, and the second from the 11th of July to the 23rd of July. 
The seasons will be both at tier 7. There are 10 ranks and players in the same half of the table will be able to div up in twos, with divisions being matched across the teams to keep it fair. The first season will be domination based and the second season will use the new version of Epicenter with the independently capturable rings. Rewards include many signal flags, some credits and finally 10,000 coal for ranking out in each season. The next thing is a mechanics change to prevent no damage penetrations. We've all had them and they're really annoying and they're usually caused by one of two things. Hitting a saturated part of a ship or hitting a torpedo bulge. In this update, hits to saturated or destroyed sections and hits to secondary batteries and torpedo tubes will deal 10% damage, the same as an overpenetration. This means, for example, if you're shooting at a ship which is just sticking its nose out from behind a rock, you'll always be able to do 10% damage even if their nose is completely saturated, which it often is in that situation. This is something to be aware of if you play ships like that like to hide behind islands. Saturation no longer makes you immune to damage. The other part of this change is that a new ribbon will indicate hits to torpedo protection. It's effectively the same as a shatter, but the ribbon will help you to understand what's happening to your shells so you can adjust your aim. This was previously shown as a penetration ribbon but for no damage, which is what was causing the confusion. Under update 085, AA damage to planes will work a little differently. Flak damage isn't changing and flying into flak bursts will still damage multiple planes, but the damage over time effect will now focus on one plane at a time. This will mean that AA should shoot down more planes more consistently, avoiding the situation where AA fire does a large amount of damage without actually shooting any planes down. The unfocused planes don't take damage apart from flak and of course will be able to carry on an attack. What this should mean is both that AA is more likely to affect squadron strike potential by more planes being shot down and that CB players will be able to make um, attacks under heavy AA because some of the planes will remain undamaged by DPS for longer. We'll all be watching this change carefully but I think it should be a positive change for surface ships and carriers alike. A few changes are being made to the minimap. Uh, the most important one for me is that all players will now see the last known position markers by default, which should mean that players who play with that turned off stand a chance of realising how important that information really is. The plus and minus key indicators are also being hidden, but you'll still be able to resize the minimap. At last, Yoshino is here. It can be yours for 248,000 coal from the Armoury. I've had her to test for several weeks and she's a very solid super heavy cruiser. She sports 310mm guns with great range and accuracy, good concealment and the option of either 12 or 20 kilometer torpedoes. So if you see one on your team, be sure to check behind you now and then for friendly torps. Don't forget though that she has a 60 second fire burn duration, so if you do get her, be sure to bear that in mind when choosing a build. Before playing 085, it's a good idea to make sure that your graphics card drivers are up to date. Wargaming are implementing an update to the scale form library, which should improve UI performance, but it will require a recent driver to work. Your drivers are probably updated automatically, but it's best to check. Finally for 085, tournament epicenter mode for two brothers is being added as an option for training room. While it's not available in the main game, this should be a fun one to try out with your clan. Perhaps challenge another clan to a little best of three. There have been a huge number of announcements about upcoming content recently, but I just want to highlight two things from beyond 085. Firstly, a new shell type is being put through closed testing, semi-armor piercing. These shells will have fuses like those of HE exploding more or less upon impact, but greater penetration than HE, meaning more damage potential. They will not be able to do splash damage to modules or set fires like HE, and they will be able to ricochet like AP. It'll be a while before we see these in-game, and I expect them to be tested on PTS before going live. I'll be testing these shells as soon as I can. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is the upcoming release of the French destroyer Tech Tree. Uh, through 086 and 087. It looks like Wargaming is sticking with the 2 update release model, giving early access to the tier 5 to 8 ships in 086 and then the full line release in 087. I've had enormous fun testing some of the French destroyers. They are very fast and the higher tier ones have main battery reload booster, but they have weak AA and no smoke. 
This combination makes them very exciting to play and I can't wait to have them back in my port again. That's it from this Foghorn. Uh, you can find me live on Twitch every Friday evening EU time and also in the Statsfolk Discord where I like to lurk. Links in the description. Try not to breathe too much post-apocalyptic air. Take care of each other and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for supporting this channel with a sub and for following me on Twitch. I love making content, talking to all of you about this game that we all love and keeping you up to date. And I'm able to do this more and more thanks to the generous support of Twitch subscribers and Patreon patrons. To support me in making more content, you can find me at twitch.tv slash statsbloke and patreon.com slash statsbloke. Twitch subs and patrons get access to a special supporter channel in my Discord. Special thanks to all my supporters. You're the best. Take care. A poke a post there. <laughs>